Okay, YouTube. So we're back for the second part of silicone block molds. Here I'm going to show how to mix and pour the silicone. So we have our digital food scale. The manufacturer says to avoid this if you have a triple beam. But uh, it seems like the digital food scales are a little more common than most. I wear the gloves to keep the uh, silicone mix off my hands because it's terribly sticky. And it's easier to throw away these disposable gloves than to try to wash my hands and use countless paper towels. So uh, this is a one to 10 mix. They ask that you mix up this bucket uh, before pouring it. Uh, the viscosity loosens up quite a bit as you get to mixing it. And uh, other than that, I don't really know other than to mix the top skin into the body, um, the benefit from it. But I do as the manufacturer suggests in this instance. Now, um, we can pour any amount in here that is suitable for the cup. And what I'm going to do is find the weight of this after we pour in the desired amount in the cup. Preferably not so much that we can't stir it. But once we get it uh, weighed, we will just add 10% of that weight onto the scale. So we'll add 10% to the weight in our head. And uh, this part B here, uh, there's a little trick to this. So uh, when you open this up, it's going to have a foil seal. Shake it up before you open it, okay? Um, but you just open it up like a juice can or with the old uh, tomato juice cans. And that helps you control the flow. And if you vent it in the top there, it doesn't glurp when it comes out. So there's 10%. Uh, it has a real heavy red color. But as you mix it up, it'll turn pink. And uh, one of the benefits to using this transparent cup is that you can see how well you're mixing it. So you wanna scrape the sides and scrape the bottom. And as you're scraping the sides and scraping the bottom, make sure you scrape your tool off on the edge of the cup to make sure you don't have any, is not mixing against your stick. So you can see this takes on a Nestle quick strawberry rabbit kind of color. And um, you just keep going, scrape the sides, get it going, usually only do this for about three minutes or so, if that, and uh, you'll get forms like Popeye after doing this all day. Okay, once this is mixed up, you have the option of degassing it if you have a degassing chamber. Otherwise, we're going to do a method called high pour, and this is where we pour a very thin stream, and that helps knock out a lot of air bubbles as it lands on the piece. I found it to be very effective. This is our universal mold release. Um, make sure that you apply this. Uh, you want to do one coat, you do the mold release, and then uh, brush it with a dry brush, and then apply another coat, and then let it dry for five minutes, and then apply another coat. I rushed through it. I made a mistake, actually, um, which we'll see up ahead in this video here. But here's the high pour method. We can uh, see that that thin stream is actually eliminating quite a bit of air bubbles. And you will see micro bubbles and that's okay. The manufacturer recommends pouring at the low points and letting it rise up over the high points. Um, I found pouring it on the detailed areas has always been favorable. I don't get air bubbles. So when we are done pouring this, you, we'll get to the end of the cup. Now you can scrape the sides of the cup. Um, if you start to see white, that means you didn't mix it well enough and I don't recommend scraping this into your mold. Just you know, cut your losses and set it to the side because that base may not kick. And then you might have some sticky compound after the rest of the mold is cured. So, you know, if you see the white stuff, just stop. It's not a big deal. Okay, we'll set that to the side. And, uh, if you want to level it, that's fine too. That really only matters when you're doing a one piece mold. It's just a uh, habit of mine, sorry. And I included this foot here to show you how I prepped it. You won't actually see me pouring the rubber into it. It would be a little redundant. So you can see how I clayed up the wall for that and put a little pour spout there on the side. So anyway, we'll get the rubber poured into that and get it back here once it's cured. Okay, so here we go. 24 hours later, we have the uh, first side cured. I can cut that 
hot glue loose with that putty knife. Careful not to cut your hand here while you're breaking these walls loose. If you can save the walls, that would be good. You can reuse them. Uh, you'll see here when I demold the foot, it's a different situation where it didn't work for me to reuse the walls, but try to spare them. And uh, right here, you can see how the rubber went up into the corrugation of the cardboard. If I had sealed the top of that cardboard, it probably would not have been able to push its way up inside because of the trapped air. But you can see that if that silicone can find a way through, it will find a way through. I love this stuff. So that's the importance of doing the prep work ahead of time, hot gluing it. Okay, so the back side here, you can see where that silicone leaked under past the clay. Just a little bit, not a big deal. Actually turned out rather nice. So we pull the clay off, careful to leave our our model or our casting in this case inside of the mold do not demold it yet just leave it in there i can take that little piece and put that back in there and uh, that's going to be our pore spout so when we demold the second side uh it'll leave a nice hole there okay so this here i'm just gently pulling these away like a loose thread on a garment and popping it with the tip of that exacto knife okay so you can see where it's and the folds of the hands and whatnot but so you can see how well I got to the parting line there that I drew with the uh, felt tip marker or the permanent marker sharpie uh, before we put the walls back up if you would like to apply your mold release or release agent I typically use Vaseline Vaseline makes a great release agent it will prevent the silicone from ever sticking to itself as long as it's on there so you can finish getting this cleaned up and get your mold put back together. Uh, I would recommend using the Vaseline before you put the walls back on. You can do it afterwards too, but you won't have the accessibility to it with the walls up like that. Um, if you elect to not use the Vaseline, you can use a universal mold release made available to you from the Smooth On Company. Uh, when you use it, make sure you follow the directions well. I used it on this project and did not follow the directions and uh, fortunately for you, you're going to see how I handle the problem when the uh, silicone sticks together and makes one block. Okay. And you will also see here that as I box this up, I do not plug that, uh, that feed spout there and we'll cut it away. So you don't have to have a feed spout. Look at this. So I put the walls back up and you can see that when I put a straight edge across there, the wall does not work. Um, so I'm going to have to cut a, another wall taller to house the silicone because if I were to use that wall, I wouldn't have really any bottom and the heel might be exposed. So here I am, uh, that universal mold release, I spray it loosely and uh, very conservatively. Not enough. So I've mixed up a second batch and I'm pouring it on here. And uh, unknowingly for me, these two pieces are going to adhere together. And that's okay because we can cut those blocks apart. And uh, the serrations, I'll show you how to cut it apart using serrations. Okay, and we're almost done. So we'll scrape the sides of that cup, wipe it in there. It's a nice pink all the way through. Kind of like a nice steak. If you pull it off the grill, it's still a little paint in the middle. Okay, so we have our molds there cured on both sides. And I'm gonna break this loose. You can throw these walls out now as you pull them off. You don't have to try to save them. In fact, they're pretty useless at this point other than to mix epoxy on or something like that. Uh, you'll see some cardboard flashing or whatever you call it uh, sticking to the silicone and that's not a big deal. I mean if you want to get a knife and scrape that off that's fine but as far as function it's not going to stop it one bit. Okay, So you can see here I'm finding out uh, that that is not coming apart and uh, you know there's a little moment of panic like uh oh what's going on here but there is enough color difference uh, between the two because I poured, must have poured just 
micro amounts different uh, to cause a color difference that I know where the parting line is and I can use that as a reference point to start to cut this apart. So as you cut it apart, um, pull and just make a lot of little cuts. Do not try to make a clean cut because all the little many hundreds of cuts, even though it looks messy, those are all registration marks and that's good for the final product. You make it one clean slice, um, as you know, your seam lines may overlap and not be quite uh, matching. So just do a lot of little cuts here. Turn the camera around so you can see what I was doing since I'm right-handed. As you get closer to the model, you'll be able to see your parting line. Now try to follow that parting line uh, to the best of your abilities so that uh, when you have your casting in there, it'll come apart as easily as possible. Okay. Uh, at this point, if you can get your model loose, uh, you can pull it out. So I had to work it a little bit, but uh, I got the hand free. But do not pull too hard because you could rip your silicone mold that you worked so hard to get. Uh, you can see a little bit of rubber that's stuck in the creases of your plaster, and that's okay. That's not a big deal. Uh, so you can see how those two pieces go back together. And I have my little pour spout that was prefabbed before the pour. So, um, this foot's gonna be a little more tricky because I did not make a pour spout before I poured that second layer. So that baby foot, the cast of that baby foot is somewhere in there. Now you have to try to remember which side is up. <laughs> and like I said, there's enough of a color differentiation that I was able to um, have a general idea of where to uh, cut. So. Uh, be patient, take your time, and uh, I probably took well over a half hour to cut this out. And again, once I found that seam line, I knew exactly where to cut, so I just kept making a lot of little cuts. And once I had the foot out, um, the marker actually got pulled into the surface of the silicone, so I uh, followed that as well as I could. Now, I'm cutting the pore spot into the piece. I know where to cut it loose and uh, just be careful and again take your time and you will have yourself a nice pour spot if you just think about it before you jump in there and start slicing. Okay. So you can see how that's what my pour spot would have looked like on the foot and I have my pour spout. I can hold that together with some rubber bands some wide rubber bands around the side and over the top and it will be ready for pouring into okay, so that concludes our silicone block molds please like and subscribe if you like this video and would like to see more like it thank you